Founder and CEO of ColorWow and co-founder of John Frieda, Gail Federici has launched some of the most innovative hair care products that have forever changed the industry. With her uncanny ability to spot all the white spaces in the market, Gail is truly unstoppable. Hi everyone and welcome to Founded Beauty, a podcast dedicated to beauty entrepreneurs who built some of the biggest brands today and where we learn exactly how they did it. We'll cover some of the most intimate stories, their path to success and how they overcame the obstacles along the way. I'm Akash Mehta, CEO and co-founder of Fable and Main, a modern hair wellness brand inspired by ancient Indian beauty secrets. Building Fable and Main has been an incredible journey so far and I decided to launch this podcast as a founder keen to learn and connect with fellow beauty brand founders around the world. I believe in collaboration over competition, and so I'm using this platform as a way to hopefully help and inspire each other in what can be quite a tough and lonely journey. So if you're an entrepreneur or simply just curious how to build a brand, this podcast is perfect for you. So without further ado, it's a delight to introduce you our guest for today, Gail Federici. She is the mastermind behind some of the most industry iconic hair care products, including John Frieda's Frizz Ease Hair Serum, which was and it still is my go-to, but Gail Federici is also the founder of Color Wow, a range of products that optimize the health of color-treated hair. Color Wow is the first of its kind, truly. Gail has listened to consumers and solved their worst hair woos for decades, innovating game-changing formulas that are now considered necessities in hair care. She has been the brain behind many cut products, including the Root Cover-Up, a concealing powder for the hair. And with a sharp eye for recognizing and understanding the need for such products, Gail is truly a pioneer in problem-solving hair care. So Gail, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So the first question I ask all my guests um, is, who, in a nutshell, is Gail? Who are you? Um... That's an interesting question. Who am I? Depends on the day. <laughs> but I guess Very when true. it comes to <laughs> business, I'm a problem solver at heart. You know, I love solving problems. Um, and I have since I was a kid. I loved puzzles. I love talking to friends about their relationship problems. And I just tend to be pretty analytical. And I think um, that's who I am. And I'm a little crazy. I love music. I sang in a rock band for a while. I'm not very good, but I have the passion. So I hope that made up for it. But yeah. I love it. Well, you know, I feel like <laughs> in a very crazy way, I feel like you're speaking the same words of, of my life because I'm an engineer by trait, but I'm a huge ah. problem solver. I love anything like escape rooms, puzzles. I do them before I go to sleep. I do like my little puzzles and trivias, but I also used to sing and love the music industry. You're so kidding. I feel like, nope, I used to busk on the streets of Portobello Road. I used to sing with in studio every evening after my engineering degree. I was, yeah, I still love it. Now I'm a bit more I of a retired shower singer <laughs> and in the odd nights I'll, I'll definitely pick up that karaoke mic but um yeah it's a passion it never goes <laughs> it never goes in fact i was it in the music goes. business in between john frieda and I oh, wow, for a few years oh. yeah well i, I can't wait it. to talk about that but um speaking of john <laughs> frieda actually i would love to know how you stumbled upon the hair care industry. I, I remember reading somewhere, I, I think you were first a temp and then you learned a lot through that. Mm -hmm. And then it, you, is that how your hair care um, journey started? It really did. It was, I never had the intention of going into this industry at all. My mo I was in Europe actually studying French. Um, I was in Paris yeah. and my mother got really sick. So I flew home and I could only do temp jobs so that I could be there for her. And one of them was at a hair care company, Zotos. And that's where it started. And I just went from temp to permanent. And I wound up when I was there working with a lot of the chemists there, which was really, really interesting to me in trying to figure out ways to solve problems back then. And I had great, great teachers at the time. And I just, I was in the education department there. Then I was in marketing and PR um, and creative. So I, I was there wow. for 10 years. 
Wow. Well, starting. actually, like we, we have, um, again, more in common because I did marketing PR in France and I studied French and for three years I was in oh Paris. Oh, my just God. Now. So this is kind of this really crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I feel like what is happening right now? I, I do have oh to God. ask you, like, how was it like in, in France? You know, it's not easy as a, as a foreigner coming into a very French speaking country. I mean, it's at first, you know, everything from the boulangerie and anywhere you go, it's French. And how was that right. in the beginning? You know, I only wound up being there for a month. I was at the University of Paris, and that's when my mother got sick and I had to fly back. But, you know, I had had five years of French, and I wasn't yeah. good, but so I would ask in French, do you speak um, English? English? And they would say yeah. no, and yeah. then I would speak French, and they would answer yeah. me in English because my French was way worse, you know, their <laughs> message than their English. So it was a little <laughs> tricky at first, I have to say. I I love it. It's it's literally, you couldn't make it up. It's exactly that. It's like, they wouldn't want to, but then they're like, they don't really want to converse more because they're like, okay, okay, boom, we speak in English then. And like, it's like, okay, right, fine. That's exactly right. <laughs> I tried to yeah. warn you. I tried to warn you. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's so interesting. So then you, um, how did like the whole John Frieda come to be? Because I understand you're a co-founder um, and the CEO yeah. at, the, at the beginning of the helm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what happened was when I was at Zotos, uh, we had 500 educators that we would take somewhere once a year and provide education programs and guest artists. And one of, in, I think it was 1988, uh, John Frieda was the person that we picked as the guest artist for this event. It was a four-day event. And that's how I first met John, was at this event. And we started talking, and I was thinking about John... Um, you know, he had so much background in styling products and in styling hair, which at the time in the U.S., it was more wash and go. So I talked to him about maybe we could write a book on styling because it was needed in the industry. And we did a book and videos. And then from there, it just led to him asking questions, you know, about uh, just consulting basically with him. And one thing led to another. I was going to start my own advertising agency and get away from hair care. And John needed help with, he had uh, just a bespoke line of products that he wanted help with. So I said, well, and he wanted me to leave, go there and help him with his products eventually. So I said, I'd be interested in that if he would also um, think about promoting and marketing a product that I was thinking of, which was frizzies. It didn't have a name at the time, but I have super, super frizzy, wavy hair. And I was always trying to think of something for my hair type because there was nothing in the market at the time. And so I had been researching and came up with an idea and I thought it would work. And I said, I really want to pursue this. I'm happy to work with you on your products, but how do you feel about, you know, working on this with me too? He said, great. And so that's how it started, really. And um, we did the book together, the video. We talked more about the idea. And one thing led to another. And I um, asked him if he had a chemist that I could work with in the UK. And he did. And that's how we came up with the hair serum, Frizzy's hair serum. That's amazing. So that's and basically how it started. I mean, and then it how many years were you kind of at the CEO front and before the, the eventual kind of or the, the, the selling? Yeah. It, well, how many years were um, you there? For? Yeah. Well, 12, it was 12 years and wow. then we sold. So it really That's started. Incredible. I always say if I had good hair, I would probably never have made five cents. It's like necessity is the mother of invention. I really believe that. Yes. And I was determined to try to figure something out that would help my hair type and there really was nothing at all on the market at that time the word frizz wasn't yeah. even on a product back then yeah so right. so and it's, just, it, it's it, that desire to also want a product for you um as a consumer of your own brand it's just so important to the authenticity and the the passion behind it because if you're using your own product and needed it and really truly saw that white space it's it's a lot more it gives you a lot more confidence to believe in the brand and the future uh, and your own products yeah, as well. That's how I have to feel. I can't sell anything unless I really believe in it. And, you know, I've always, at the end of the day, you're working so many hours 
and you want to, your reward is in what you produce. And if you can, you know, solve a problem for somebody, it's super rewarding. And with Frizzies, we had so many letters back in the day and um, they were filled with, you know, cabinets were filled with letters from people and someone even made a copper mold of a Frizzies bottle that you could make chocolate Frizzies bottles, if you, which was crazy. And of course, we never did it. But there was so much need for a product line like that. There was total white space. There was nothing for my hair type at the time. Yeah. So it was, you know, I think if you make meaning, then you make money. And I, I've always felt the meaning comes first. You want to make a difference. And it's always for us, not about line extending and line extending. It's, is there another problem we can solve? that's either no one's addressed or that they've addressed, but not in a satisfactory way for the consumer, which is how the Color Wow root cover-up came about. Oh, I love that. And in terms of like the last, the, the 12 years when you were working there, um, did you have any like, apart from incredible mm-hmm. products that you were launching and in, in, in the creative you know, field for, did you have any extreme like highlights of yours that will stay with you forever? You know, um, we won many awards for Frizzies and wound up in the Hall of Fame, which was a huge honor because at the time it was like Chanel number no. five. And um, I think it was uh, a moose, uh, eyelash. There were about five products into the Allure Hall of Fame. And that was exciting. But I think the most exciting thing was when we received all of the letters from people that they talked about their kids being embarrassed about their hair and what a difference we made. A mayor of a city in the U.S. wrote a poem about what a difference it made. And I mean, we had tens of thousands of letters so grateful for Frizzies. And to me, that's really what I take away from it. Because, I mean, awards are great, but when you really know that you feel you're changing someone's life or you're, it's not like, you know, rocket science and, and medicine, but you're making them feel better about themselves. And that is the, the reward, really. And that's what, at the more. end of the day, yeah, it makes us get out of bed in the morning. Like, okay, what can we do? Because it really does make a huge difference to your overall um, confidence. And, you know, I, whether it's letters or uh, comments or DMs or even in emails, I always ask my, um, I, 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 may, I must admit, I, sometimes I, I do ask to fe- get them filtered sometimes with my teams. I'm like, just send me like the ones that are really meaningful, emotional, that I want to like frame them and put them, you know, by my office. Because it gives you that purpose drive, you know, during those moments where you're a bit down or stressed, it gives you that visibility of like, this is why you're doing it. You know, this is the reason why. You are working hard every day, creating these products. It's you are impacting people and changing their lives. Yeah, it's that feedback that you get yeah. know that your work, because you know, starting your own business, as you know, it takes a lot of hours, a lot of perspiration. You know, it's tough. But when yeah. you do get when you do get feedback like that, it just makes that's why you're doing it. You know, that's why you're that's doing, why you're doing it. it. So. Yeah. And then, you know, you mentioned about um, in between John Frieda and Color Wow, you went into the music industry. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing probably when it came, got to the selling element, there was probably like some contingencies or you have to probably yeah, have a non-compete, non-compete for a while. Is, 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 okay, that makes sense. Totally. Um, is that, which is sometimes when you use it for your advantage, it's a blessing because you can also take a moment to try other passions and other things because we're so diverse as humans. We don't just need to be doing one thing. Um, so why the music industry and what was it like during those five years? <laughs> um, the music industry, because, well, I've always loved music. My husband is a really good singer, plays guitar. Um, and my daughters were are good singers. They're twins. They're blondes. And we put them in our sheer blonde commercials um, at 16 years old or something. And we had a jingle uh, written And it just went absolutely crazy at the time. And it became this like cult commercial where people would come up to us in the, um, when we were in England, I remember at Balance in England, people, the waitress came up to us and sang the jingle and people would just, yeah, they knew the dance from it. It became this major cult thing. So 
uh, record labels were interested in the girls, but they were still young and they, um, it was a Disney label at first that was interested. They didn't, were not interested in that. They like R and B. And we just, once we sold the company, John Frieda's brother was in the music industry and it just seemed a natural fit. Cause that's what we like. People were interested in my daughters, the twins, and that's how it started. And then we signed some other artists and, um, we did that for five years. But, wow. And yeah, yeah, I think I'm better at the hair care than I was at the music. <laughs> Let me just tell you. So, so, Although it was fun. Yeah, sure. But then how did you manage to um, kind of then decide to create a whole new brand, Color Wow, and uh, kind of leave again the music industry to go back into the hair care world? Yeah, well, during our five years in the music industry, it was fun. We kept our nucleus of our team together. And we were all working on like MySpace and trying to get, you know, more followers and things for our artists. And um, to be honest, it was a crazy, crazy business. And I noticed I have really not great hair, but I did not go gray early. Um, my sisters, though, and some of the other team members were gray. And I was mm-hmm. looking at them. I was wondering, why aren't you covering the gray streaks down? I said, why are you leaving it like that? They said, there's really nothing out there. I said, what do you mean? There has to be. This is a pervasive problem, Roots. They said, well, there are sprays, but they get all over the place. There are crayons, but they look fake. They don't reflect. Um, So they weren't happy with anything out there. So I was thinking, it seems crazy to me when baby boomers are coming into that whole area. It's a huge market. So I thought, I wonder if we could do something that was more effective and easier to use, not messy at all. And I thought back to a photo shoot I did with somebody once where he put a blonde wig on a model and it looked so fake. So he darkened the roots with um, an eyeshadow. But when we hit it with the fans, it blew all over the place. It was dusty and it really didn't stick to the hair. And I thought, you know, if there was a way that we could get a powder to stick to the hair it could be really reflective because you could put so many different colors in different tones and it would look more like hair if there was a way. So during the music industry, we were trying to develop that just to see really for our own, again, my family's issues, not my own, my family and friends. First, the frizz was me. And then it was my family and friends. I thought, can we solve their problem somehow? And after three years, we had this formula that was absolutely, I, I just didn't think it was even possible. And then I, my sister was going away to Florida and I put it on her roots and she called me over the weekend and said, you are not going to believe this. And I said, what? She said, I went swimming in this. My head was underwater and it did not come off. It didn't streak. It didn't, and it didn't come off. My roots were still covered. So we realized then you need shampoo to take it off, but it didn't transfer. And we thought, okay, this is something that is, we've got to go out there. I wasn't planning to go back into hair care again. I had been there, done it, you know, got the t-shirt, the whole thing. And I didn't want to go back in it, to be honest. But when we were able to crack that huge problem, I thought, this is so important. Let's think about hair color in general. And are there other things that need attention? What could we do? And should we come out with a line? And that's what we did with Color Wow. And I think, you know, it's that problem solving nature of yours that just, uh, you can help it. And I'm glad you couldn't. I can't help it. You saw the gap. I cannot help you needed myself. It. And, and, and I love people like you because it's like, you know, there isn't ever really, a, there shouldn't be this rules, written rules of we're stopping now, we've done this. It's like, just go with the moment, go with the time. And a problem solver should always problem solve i think that's why i believe because then the world is changing for the better and thank god because when before this podcast i was telling my sister oh i'm having gail federici on and she's like wait what like what do you mean she's like my idol and i'm like yeah she's coming oh on and she's god. like and you and you know the root cover-up she has the and and the funny thing is is like actually root cover-ups and touch-ups this is something that in indian ayurveda isn't so uncommon like you know we dye how we have we have haldi but my sister still uses your product you know, you've just like, it's incredible. Uh, that's um, nice to hear. So, so yeah, you've really done something really special. And, and mm-hmm, I'm guessing you. that 
No, thank you. And and I'm guessing the name came from, I, I guess, the initial, the, the reason to create it for color and the wow effect. Or what was the inspiration behind yeah. color wow? Well, yeah. my sister actually came up with the name every time, you know, when we were working with it and then we would show somebody, their reaction always was wow. Because we could even yeah. use blonde color and go over dark hair and make a highlight and attach it to a highlight that had grown out. You can only do that for, you can't continue to do it as it grows out but for a certain couple of months you can and it was the reaction always wow wow to the demo and then we thought okay my sister thought color wow and we and that's what we called it that's incredible and it's a family you know, affair it's a family affair <laughs> i love anything you know me i work with my sister anything family affair i think is is the best if, if you're fortunate enough to be able to to work and and grow with your family but it's it's an amazing gift to have um and yeah, in terms we of work like together you work so, how, yeah, oh, so do you do you do this with your sister ah two sisters so and a brother our, my brother is our lawyer my one sister is operations and my other sister does pr wait that's amazing and named the product. That, that is incredible and, and i have to ask how is the dynamic? Do you have those off days? How do you deal with any of those little tiffs? Well, I'm the oldest. So I've always been, I guess, the bossiest. And that's always been the, you know, way it's gone since we were young. Yeah. So I think it's easier than if I was a middle child. But we yes. have our moments. <coughs> yeah. And I, I tend to be very, um, my, I guess, management style is calm, you know, and I'm mm. very direct, but you know, I'm not somebody that wants to tear you down. I want to, if things aren't going right, I don't really get mad. I want to help the person, um, yeah. you know, just improve really and empower. grow. But yeah. with my sisters, yeah, I want to try to empower. But with my sisters, I tend to cut to the chase and sometimes not be as thoughtful about things. Do you know what I mean? So if I, I have it. my yeah. moments with them. I'm sure I drive them crazy, but. But I also think what helps is you you said just before that clear kind of delegation of remits and work is, is really helpful to a conducive family working environment because having like someone in ops, someone in PR, someone in the legal yeah. law, you, know, you overseeing an overarching division and as the, the CEO and what it, it's it's important because then you don't really have those issues about who's doing what, am I stepping on your toes? Like, and you empower their own yeah. kind of remits and give them the trust, mm -hmm. which is really important. Yeah. I yeah, don't I like to agree. micromanage. I mean, I do if someone is new and, yes. and trying to bring them up to speed. But in general, I try to give people because you are, you know, only as good as your team, really. You have to have a good team. And that is part of the success, I think, is putting together a group of like-minded people in general, um, that people that understand the vision and have a similar work ethic. And, um, and I've just been really lucky in both companies that I have had really, really strong, really good people, not political. Um, and it's been just a joy, really. That's both amazing. And, and, you know, in terms of apart from just family, but also like your, I call them the stakeholders, the, the people around the company. I know you have the incredible like celebrity uh, hairstylist, Chris Appleton, you did a Chris. product, the, the money. How did that happen? Yes. And the importance of, you know, these, these industry veterans by your side. Yes. I mean, I really was looking with Colorado for another stylist to work with. I really enjoyed that with John where we could bounce ideas and really come up with a product that, worked you know like i said before we were never one to oh that product is really doing well like a dry shampoo we should come out with a dry shampoo unless we could come out with a dry shampoo was that was better than what's out there which we ha we can't at, at least at this point then we just don't do it basically and with when you're working with hairdressers at the top of their game they offer so much insight and for the yes. first few years i wasn't working with anyone and i also like to be behind the scenes more and more direct people. And so um, I had so many different portfolios that I was looking at. And I just didn't think anybody was right until um, my sister brought me uh, Chris Appleton's. And I said, I don't even know who he is. You know, I have no idea who he is. Let me look at the book. 
I looked at everything and I thought, oh my God, this hair is my same aesthetic. Like I loved it. I thought, oh, okay, he's great. So at the time he had only been doing Rita Ora. He hadn't had any other celebrities. So we had a um, FaceTime and it was just, he was really articulate, really had a fresh take on everything, super smart about how he looked at everything. And I said, let's, if you're interested, let's um, work together for six months and see how it goes. And it was just, you know, a perfect match. He's just, um, he's incredible. He really is. I can't say enough amazing things about him and his work ethic. He's just um, an animal. You know, he just doesn't yeah. stop and he thinks about everything. And he's just um, been great and, and what I, I needed. So when we're coming up with products, giving them to Chris to test also. I mean, we all yeah. test them in inside too, which is um, I, our comment to everybody is we have bad hair days, so you don't have to because we have them all the time. Like today, okay, I tested a product this morning and my hair is like a pancake. It's usually not like this because it wasn't a good formula. So I thought, okay, do I run in there and wash it again and do it? I'm thinking, oh, I don't have time. I'm just going <sighs> to deal with it you know i almost put a hat on before but um yeah we have bad oh. ha hair days so no one else has to but chris as the final judge of everything and giving um input to us is just been really 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 critical oh that's amazing and, and it's it's really nice to see like from a test of six months to now becoming like the global like is a global creative director um yes Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it's I, just incredible yeah, to see how you can grow director. together. Mm -hmm. Artistic director. Yeah. It's incredible Whatever, to see I'm how. Not sure. Yeah. <laughs> but he's part of the family yeah. and that's the most important he's thing. A major, and I love that. Yeah. Major. Word. I, I always forget titles. We're not that big, although we're getting to a big size now. We have to pay more attention to that kind of thing. But yeah. it's a team effort. It really is. And that it is. It's just great when you share the same vision as other people and yeah. you're on the same page. Obviously, we'll have you know, different thoughts about things. And maybe we should go in this direction or that. But overall, we march to the same drummer, like totally. Yeah, and no, it's I think fun. it's so important. You know, it's fun. It's important to have fun. You know, it's important to like the people that you're working with and obviously yeah. respect them. That's just so important because there's no stopping you when you have a great team. And I, like I said, I really believe that, you know, luck has some things to do with it. And, interviewing you don't always know but i just have had really good people around me i really really have great great chemists beyond comprehension dr joe sincata amazing that's behind all the formulas oh, so okay i mean I, I i do believe also um and testament to you as a founder ceo it's it's also your your eye right that be, is able to spot and figure out um which is a big testament because um it is a very hard kind of game to find the right people and to nurture them mm. and to grow with them and to keep them and retain it's a, it's a whole thing um but i think uh, certain people are better at it and um i really believe in everything you've done and built that you are that exactly and i, I really mm, uh, you. i think you are full of empowerment which i think is great um but i, I do have a kind of a, a question on your opinion especially as someone who is a haircare founder myself a haircare brand founder myself um what how has the industry for you shifted and changed i mean now we're in this era of three second tiktok videos very quick totally. ephemeral uh, way of thinking um and um the pandemic with salons closed you know a lot of at-home rituals so how has it shifted for you um since yeah the, the years and experience you've had um like night and day so with the John Frieda frizzies and all of that, it was very simple compared to what it is today. We, there was no internet, no website. You sold it into 20,000 doors. And then we made TV commercials. I mean, that was the creative that we had to make sure we got right was the commercial and print ads. But we would do that every year, year and a half. Okay, mm -hmm. so that was then. Now, content, we're doing content every day somehow or reaching out to influencers all the time so that we can use UGC. You yeah. know, it's just, you know, 
much, much, much more complicated. Learning, you know, Facebook rules change, algorithms change all the time. What's the best? Then you go from regular posts to reels. TikTok now is, you know, then you have to learn, okay, how do you survive or how do you do well, really, on TikTok? It's another different formula. And it's a different type of creative that you, than what you're doing for um, Facebook and Instagram. And then there's also Google that you have to think about your search terms and your long tail words and what, you know, there are 60 characters or 90 characters for different, I mean, there's so many rules and they're changing all the time. Same thing with Amazon. They have their own yeah. set of types of advertising and certain, you know, restraints or um, rules that you have to follow. And to learn all of this all the time is much, much more time consuming and challenging than back in the day. I mean, literally, it was like a piece of cake back then compared to how it is now. It was different. You only had a few huge players like P&G, L'Oreal. There were, you know, um, who else? Unilever. But that was kind of it. And we were one of the very few smaller players at the time. Now, so many people, which is great that more people have the opportunity to come up with, you know, products and ideas, but it's harder to get a name for a product yeah. line because, so you know, it's so hard. It's much harder, but I think it's all of the digital side of the business that keeps me up late reading and reading because things change all the time. So beyond the normal, it's reading about all the best practices for the yes. website, for your homepage, for your product description pages, you know, goes, the list goes on and on. hundred percent. And I, and I think actually yeah. that constant learning, uh, which you nailed it on the head is so important for us to just be consistently reinventing and resetting as well, because obviously the industry is moving so quickly and what we knew five years ago or even last year is shifted and it might be an iteration yeah. of it. It might be still important to learn and, you know, grow from it, but also it is a benefit. People often get scared by it, but I mean, I've created my brand. We launched in 2020, um, but um, it feels weird because I feel like it was yesterday, but it's actually been nearly two years. <laughs> and, um, but it, it's exciting because me coming in and the first step would have been like, oh, launching at Sephora, you know, there's all these veterans, you have this Moroccan oil and how will I ever beat their sales? 100%. And, and it's scary. But then when you actually reset it and be like, well, they're also a little bit scared. They, maybe they haven't mastered TikTok yet. They're not reactive enough. Maybe they haven't been viral. Or maybe they haven't done this consumer thing and I will try that first. Or NFTs now and digital. And, you know, this is where <laughs> I feel a little bit calmer. I'm like, oh, maybe I can actually beat them. I can do it quicker and be a new brand. And it's okay. So that's so important to do. And it's exciting for, for, for brands because you can grow today more than you could before if you are listening. Yes, you have to keep learning, which is really why um, I think if it wasn't like this and it was the same as it used to be, I it would be so boring. I don't think I would yeah. still be doing this. But the fact that I have to keep up, I have to keep learning, I have to keep reading is what, you know, energizes me, really. It's that yeah. kind of thing, learning, learning, learning. There was this quote by... Um, Seneca, a Stoic. I'm reading this Stoic newsletter. I have it coming. Um, and it was, education is for life. It's not for graduating. You never graduate from, and you're done. You're always, yeah. always learning. Because that is what life, you know, that's what energizes you and inspires you and keeps you wanting to go on is just, for me, for sure, is learning new things. You know, that's yeah. what charges me up. Yeah. And, and that's the joy of this life we live in is like we have the ability to reinvent, to learn, to grow. Um, and tomorrow is really a new day. And I love the fact that you said that about education, because I'm a huge advocate for like, um, especially for students who get very worried about, oh, I've graduated now. What? It's like, well, graduate, like, you know, university is not the stopping of it at all. Like you can still do something very different with your degree. Like you'll consistently need to just put in the effort put in the grind and learn. Um, don't be worried mm -hmm. about a piece of paper or your three years you did. That was society's remit of what is considered totally. maybe optimal. And people are used to doing that. And there's still a place for that. But if you just do mm -hmm. that, 
you won't be succeeding in this way the world is going because you need to be always ready to learn more and more. Totally. More now than absolutely ever. It's, it's a lot, but it's a good kind of challenge, I think. And I do think it's great for people. You have more opportunities now. People think you have less, yeah. some people, yeah. but you don't. You, have, you just have to put yourself out there. Do you know what I mean? And really I get agree. involved. You know, I get fully involved. Agree. And yeah. No, oh, it's amazing. And, and so, it's so you know, in terms of now Color Wow and the future, do you have um, sort of like a vision of how you would like to see it grow? Is it like just international penetration? Is it just uh, more into like. Uh, one founder before told me, and I really like use it as my mantra to my team. It's like, I just want every single person to have one, you know, X product in their cabinet. And I'm like, yeah, now I want everyone to have one Fable and Main in their cabinet. Like, what is your kind of goals for Color Wow? Well, it always has been in, in the past with John Frieder. I remember saying, I just want at the end of the day to, if you're confused about what products to get for your hair, because there's so many different types and so many in each category. Just know that if you don't know that much, a John Frieda product, that was it back in the day, you're safe with, you know that it's going to perform. And at that, that was what I wanted people to have um, amazing credibility in the brand. And at the end of the day, I think it was Allure that said that. They were talking about 3,000 products out there, which was the best in every category. And they said, when in doubt, choose a John Frieda product, which was what our yep. kind of goal was. And that is what it is also right now. It's, Color it's the wow. credibility. Like I just, that's why we don't line extend to line extend. I just want to know that people to understand that when we come out with something, we can do a demonstration right before your eyes, like with Color Wow or with Dream Coat, which is another like, you know, major success for us and a transformative product and completely new technology. We can do a demo and it's going to be different than anything you see. And yeah. it's the results that matter. And I want, uh, that's what I want. The same thing, which is if it's coming from us, you can believe that it's going to perform period. And that we don't line extend to line extend. We don't come up with say dry shampoo because that's the flavor of the month or the mm -hmm. year or whatever. If we can't do it better, we don't do it basically. I love that. And I mean, that's proven by, honestly, like I go to your website, I go to the retailers as well, Amazon, et cetera. But when I went on your website, yeah. the amount of five-star reviews is just proven, you know, and especially when you're saying like certain hero skews at the dream co, you know, you, you have like 10 K right. reviews. It's just, that is organic verified purchases of people saying it's changing their hair. That is the truest testament of it works. And it's there for a reason. And I love it. It's and I don't want to let anyone down. That's why for the last two yeah. years, or more, we've hardly come out with any products. We've come out with two products in probably the last two and a half, three years. Because if we yep. don't nail it, we don't, don't do release it, it. Basically, I love it. No, we have oh, more that... coming out this year because we've been, you know, that's another goal coming out with yeah. what we have set up. I I just had an MPD call, as you know, you probably have many of those, and that was yeah. a big part of it. Is like I would go back to them later and say, you know, like don't stress, retail will be retail. But uh, our mission was always less is more unless it's, unless it's the right thing, you don't do it. And I think that's exactly what you just said and stand for. So it's so important to just do the right products and launch the ones that you'll be proud of and has a purpose, each one, you know, there's a reason totally. for it. Totally. Yeah, that's, um, I don't know if you've ever listened to Guy Kawasaki. He had this podcast no. that a lot of people listened to that was called The Art of the Start. And he uh, said okay. that, he was the one that said something about if you make meaning, then the rest will come. You're six. And if you make meaning, if you make a difference, you really don't. Mm. I mean, yes, there's more to having a good product. You have to know how to get the, you know, consumer to, you know, you have to bring it to their attention. You've got to find out how to, you know, increase awareness. But overall, if you make meaning, if that's what you set out to do, rather than making money, you usually will be much, much better off. And, and it's more rewarding, I think, than to just chase the dollar in a way. This gives you more, yep. yes, it's great to make money. Don't get me wrong, we all want that. But when you make meaning, it's overall just such a more satisfying career, life, whatever. 
Um, Fully agree. And that's the I love principle. That. Yeah. No, I love that. I mean, I mean, I also have to ask because you mentioned about you know incredible hero skews and products. Um, while I have you on the podcast, is I, I was a huge fan of the John Frieda, um, the Matt Full Repair one. Like it was like a tamer, um, and I couldn't find it anywhere for so many years. So that like, might have been after me. I don't know what that was, was really. I don't think. Oh, but like uh, the question is more about like when whatever the product is is a lot of products sometimes get discontinued right and there are reasons beyond some people it's they either don't work or they do work but they're not you know cost of good is not viable or maybe there was some opposition coming in with the name and saying you can't really sell whatever have you ever had any experiences with like kind of changing formulas or discontinued products and you know what's your advice on that to people in the industry creating okay. brands so this is really interesting, and I, this sounds not that it's not believable, but John Frieda never had a discontinued product ever in the 12 years. Color Wow mm. has not had a discontinued product okay, yet, wow. but it's different because we're just in Sephora now for, what, a year, yeah. and we're still strong. So, I mean, a year is not that much, no. um, whereas, yeah, so, you know, hopefully it will continue like that. But we don't make that many products. And the one time I'll say during John Frieda, they were going, um, I think it was Walgreens or someone was going to discontinue uh, a wax that we had, which was a slow seller because there's so much product. It lasts a long time. And Mm -hmm. our argument to them was per square inch, we sell, we have more profit per square inch than anybody else in the store, including all the big players. So as long as our overall space is generating more profit per square inch, please do not take the wax out because the wax is part of the overall thinking behind Mm -hmm. the line. It makes the line more professional because professionals rely on this. I know it's not a fast seller and mover, but we need that for the overall positioning of who we are and the brand and professionals rely on it. And I understand that you need to make, you know, your profit. But if our profit overall for the space that we take up is what it should be or more, which it was way more, then can Mm. you please leave it in there? And they agreed. So, you know, if you've got a good reason, if you've got a really good reason that makes sense, because I always believe it has to be a win-win. So you can't just think about what you want the store to do, you know, because if you're Mm. in their position, what are you, you've got to make it work for you. But if you've got a, a logical, rational, strategic reason for doing it and they're not losing, then you usually, you know, get your way. Basically. No, I, I think that's so important. And I think going to the, my initial question and your answer, it's a true testament to, again, saying the fact that you create products with purpose. Um, you yes. also think logically about the the whole sustainability and profitability and just the, the business needs of each product, you know, it's important to do so as well because you can have an incredible product, but it might not be viable. It might not last. It might not be at the right price point. All that stuff is important. But then also, I mean, I worked in LVMH. I said, Lord, I worked in these big conglomerates and I saw a lot of discontinued. And maybe now you're saying, you know, it might be an after your time. That is a testament of actually there is a universe where products and stuff are created by by giants or by, you know, quick thinking, quick money. And that's sometimes a problem. Um, so as a founder, you know, while you're in the game, it's really important to always keep that your hat on with the purpose to create the products for a reason and fight by them. Like they're your children, you know, yes. like they need to, they need to be there for a reason. And I love that you did that. Yeah. You do have to have that fight because you aren't just throwing them in there to throw them in there because you want, yeah. because that's how a lot of companies make money is by, launching a new product after a new product after a new product. But for me, always the credibility of our brand was the most important thing always to me was our credibility. I didn't want to ever let anybody down. And so I don't, I, I probably, it's to my detriment. And I keep saying this to other people in the company, but really I should look in the mirror and keep telling myself, which is, You know, don't let the um, perfect be the enemy of the good, which is like I have to think about it for a while. But people are always saying that. And it's basically don't keep 
delaying, 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 delaying forever because you want it to be perfect, which sometimes I do push, 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 push. Um, um, and, and I did do that with the root cover up because with frizzies, um, we went into white space. That was pure white space. But with the root cover up, there were so many root cover ups out there, but it was a small market. And they had a bad reputation, really, the root cover ups. People did not like them. So when you come in with another product that people in the category people don't like, and they go, Ugh, another root cover up, yuck, it's another horrible product that um, it was, I said, we can't come out, wash, a, uh, you know, say goodbye to your grays because we were doing these billboard you know end caps and i said you we've got to position this carefully because we're going into a category that people think is not that great the the results from all the products and bottom line is i did push 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 because all of the lines were um more or less you know kiss your grays goodbye type of thing and i said that could be any of these and yeah. it's in a compact. And so I said, this is going from what's out there, like a rotary phone to an iPhone. That's the difference between this, the technology. So then the creative department wrote the next handheld device to change your life. And that's what we put up there. And then we showed the demo of the gray and it blew out. So there's something to be said for pushing, pushing, pushing. And some people, I, I push them to their limit, <laughs> but I, that's me too. So that works. But other times when I'm going like that, it's sometimes it's too much, you know, you've got to yeah. kick the tires, Balance. but you got to know yeah. when to stop, which is sometimes my problem. No, but I mean, the as credibility long as... matters. Exactly. And but at least the awareness is the most important because it is something that's it's it's I can relate so much. And it's it's there is no right or wrong. There's just the way that we choose. But I do believe like being aware is very important of like when is the right time to hone in and push. And it is a game. It's it's a but we're, is, always, it's we're always learning. We're always, it's tough. And uh, and ever, and especially as you go deeper and grow a brand, it does get tougher because your retailers are all very different. Your teams now grow and they're all very different. Um, and, you know, there is that beauty of having a small, agile, you know, scope of work, team, portfolio of products, goals of like certain revenue targets. And then as you grow and grow, you have stakeholders, you have investors, you have this, and it gets more complicated, you know? It does. It but, does, uh, but then you're, yeah. you're stretched, you know, and then yes. you learn. And you're exactly. constantly growing when you have it, if, you know, you, yeah. and, and your team, you just yeah. bringing yourself to the next level. And sometimes it's painful, but that at the end of the day, it is super rewarding, I think. And you grow so much as a person, even Couldn't mistakes aren't mistakes. You know, like we have things that aren't, but you learn, how are you going to learn? Like, I don't, I don't yeah. get that worried over if we do something, you know, that's not right or and we've got one of the employees makes a mistake in a decision i don't ever go crazy over that because we do have checks and balances and you know where there's a will there's a way and people are learning you learn and yes. it's not too costly to learn really no, hopefully. exactly and and i i even like it's kind of like a hidden rule in my pnl but i haven't i have like a buffer of like mistakes but grow like like it's like it's like healthy it's like i don't mind spending it like it's like okay Same. you might have made a printing mistake and it's okay if i even hit i even want you to hit the targets and not really but kind of because it means we're we're, <laughs> we're doing things humanly you know we're doing things normally like it's meant to we're meant to be missing things and it's part of the journey because those ups and downs and where you grow from them is so important it's so important it shouldn't be always up 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 ego up everything's good because we're not learning we're not pushing ourselves we're not thinking twice we need to be very mindful and humble in the journey as well totally totally so. agree totally agree so, yeah um, so, you know, in terms of like, you know, the pandemic has really shaped our ways of life. And you were mentioning mm -hmm. before to me uh, that, you know, working from home and uh, it, it's kind of like the new norm for a while. How has kind of your rituals um, and it could be morning, evening or just the all day rituals. How have they adapted and what are they like now to gear you for success every day? 
you know, I wish I was more disciplined. I read these books all the time. Um, a different, you know, the Phil Knight book, um, the, what is that? The shoe dog. And mm -hmm. I read Titans, which is about all these people in different, um, industries. What is their morning routine? And I always want my morning routine to be like theirs, whereas I'm up super early, but I'm more of a night person. So I don't have the best morning routine. And I have to say that through the pandemic, I am not a role model. I was at my desk from morning on videos through the day, eat on all night, like hugely long, more hours than I've ever worked in my life, not getting up from my desk. It was a third of our business was in the salon side. So it was, okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with staff? There are people that can't work because the salons are closed. It was really like 16 hour days easily every day for over a year. I was not exercising because I was just, I'm not like that now. I yeah. kind of learned, I burned out. During, I mean, I like I said, my sisters had gray hair. I had none. Well, right now, I'm going right through that root cover up myself because during this pandemic, I went gray. <coughs> yes. So now what I do is I do try to get up early. I do try to meditate now in the morning. And I will pretty much make sure that I get at least a walk slash jog in five days a week, mm -hmm. which I wasn't taking care of myself really through the whole thing at all yeah. and eating healthy. But I, I love also, <clears throat> and I think it's really important whenever I ask this question and it's honesty and, and also intentions. And I think what you've said is so powerful and true because you said two words like try and at least, I think that's really important is to accept that we're not like, I mean, if I say I lie to people, if I'm like, oh, I wake up every morning at gym and like, no, like I try and sometimes I succeed and sometimes I don't and it's okay. Um, but my intentions are there and that's important. So I love that you said try and, and at least I looked for those words and I was like, yeah, that's it. It's so important. Yeah, I do. I do try. I try more now than I used to because it yeah, is exactly. so important. And, and I want my team to do that all the time. If they need to jog, you know, later in the day for whatever reason they want to for their own mental health you know absolutely free pass do what you need to do because they absolutely killed it i said they were like the seal team you know a whole seal team where they were relentless throughout yeah. this to make sure that we did well and losing a third of the business at the end of the year we wound up making more than that third that we but that is a true testament to the dedication the team. commitment the like drive of the team, you know, it's not me. It's the whole, I could never have done it by myself. It was a yeah. team effort and everybody was in the, like I said, there's no team I'd rather be in the trenches with than the team that I have now through this pandemic. They were unbelievable, so supportive. And I want to, you know, give back to them. I don't want them to get sick over work. You know, that's the last thing I would ever want. So we did extend longer Fridays. Um, we usually have them in the right. summer, extended them through to Christmas because, and, and just were easier about kids are sick, whatever. Don't worry about it. You don't need to take, you know, time because you want your team to have a life, you know, and to be healthy. Yes. That's the most important thing, really. Oh, well, so. thank you for saying that. It's, it's so important. And I'm, I'm really glad you're, you're mentioning that because it's something all founders need to have top of mind, really top of mind. I think so, especially these days when you are glued to your computer screen, yeah. doing jumping from one meeting, virtual meeting to another, to yeah. another, to another. It is not healthy. It's not, and that. we're not noticing, you know, we don't, if you're not in the office as well, you don't see that real like emotion. Are they fatigued or are they stressed? And we don't necessarily yes. make the time to say, Hey, like, do you have a five minute coffee? Like we don't. So sometimes it's either too late where they quit because they're whatever, or, or, you know, they're just not happy. And then work is going to affect team morale is going to affect and your relationship is going to affect. So it is important to just sometimes be more aware than just being aware because it's hard with what we have today with Zooms and stuff to be just doing what we're doing. You have to be a little bit more mindful of their own interests and doing things that are in their best, um, you know, mental health and their own future. As I well. agree. 
you really have to think about it all the time because when we're together, we do have fun when we're in the office. And I think work has to be fun. It can be, Mm. you know, difficult and challenging and relentless at times. But if you're together, usually we we can laugh at the things that go wrong. I mean, terrible things go wrong and we're stressed by it. But at the same time, we laugh that are you kidding me that we're in this position again? And then we start laughing and go, okay, how do we get out of it? You know, and we have fun. We'll go out for lunch together or we'll go for a drink or something. And it's just you lost that these last two years. We've lost that. So you to lost keep a lot people, of it. yeah. So no, you have um, to. yeah. So you've got to be much freer with with having you know your team do what they need to do for themselves. They have to. They're going to get if, they, if you've got good people, they will get the work done. You don't have to babysit them. They will not let you down when they're good and whatever they feel is necessary for them. Then I want to honor that. Because I just think it's, it's super important. So well, now, um, before we go into the fire round questions, I, I ask all my guests the same question. Um, and it's about, you know, travels opening up, but TSA is being super strict. And they're saying, Gail, you can travel, but you can only bring one color wow product with you. So what is that go-to product of yours? It is definitely the shampoo. And I'm, it's a cross between the shampoo and the dream coat. But I don't yep. like to use any other shampoo. It scares me because all of our ingredients rinse off. And I know through mm. the studies with our um, chemists that most shampoos have ingredients that stay behind. And yes. shampoo is the only thing that you massage into your scalp. That's the only product. So you want to make sure every ingredient comes off or you could block new hair growth or you could have issues. So for the healthiest hair, and so now I'm afraid to use something in a hotel. Because I know yeah. that there are ingredients there that don't. So that one, but then I have the worst frizzy hair and the dream coat protects in the most humid climate. So it's a toss oh, up easy. between those and two. And the good thing is you have also travel size so you can bring them to you, the shampoo. Exactly. And you can travel, yes. which is great. That's yes. amazing. I love that. Um, so fire round questions. First thing that comes to your mind. Um, the first question is, what is another beauty brand that you're currently loving? Not a hair brand because I don't really yeah, use other. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm using a lot of La Mer right now. Mm, As you can see, really I have products. these two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've got these two giant boxes that just came to me. Oh, amazing. <laughs> so that, that, you know what's a game changer? The, it's expensive, but I had a, when I was at Estee Lauder, I had the discount. So it was quite good. Uh, the La Mer lip balm. Uh, it's so good. Oh. You have I to try tried it. it. It's in okay, a pot. Okay, I will. I mean, I think normally they're like oh, 40, I think it's like $60. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. It's they're, expensive. They're expensive. Their products, they're expensive. Yeah. Well, Le Mer is, but, but the yeah. quality is, is yeah. unmatched. It's great. It's so, great. Ah. Mm-hmm. Good choice. Um, what is a guilty pleasure of yours? Uh, I guess it's watching Netflix. I don't know if that's a guilty yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Um, I mean, it I depends if you're watching a lot of theory. it, then yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't get to I didn't get to read over the last two years. I love, love, love to read. That's like one of my big passions. Uh-huh. And the last two years, I haven't read that much because I'm reading best practices. You know, I'm reading all the changes yeah. on, in on the digital world, which yeah. it, it's been ju- just too much. But I yeah. love to read. But instead of that now, just to relax at the end of the day a good Netflix series that doesn't keep me up too late, which is the problem sometimes, because if it's a yeah. good series, I just want to keep the next, the next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Total. It's so easy. I mean, luckily I feel like, um, there's not so much newness like there's this, but then my problem is, is like, I sometimes like have asked my friends and they tell me like, you need to put these six on your hit list. And I'm like, okay, but if I watch them, I'm yes, going to watch all 10 episodes in one go. So it's about yeah. timing. So, I mean, my next question, which is what are you currently watching or reading, but watching in this case? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I just finished line of duty, the British yeah. um, series. I didn't love this last one so much, and I'm trying to think. I watched um, something pretty good recently. Oh, it was Spanish. Um, ah. It was Unauthorized Living. I watched before okay. that, but I don't get a chance mm-hmm. to binge watch too much. But 
Yeah. I just finished the um, the uh, what did I just say? Not line of, duty. Living, line of duty. Line of duty. Nice. Mm. Um, what's your favorite social media platform right now? TikTok, for sure. Who? I mean, <laughs> it, it's the best right now. It's so, but it's again very. That addictive. is a guilty pleasure. Okay, that, that is, is my another, guilty yeah. pleasure. That <laughs> is like totally to say. it. I am addicted. When I go on, I cannot stop. And I say to myself, don't do it when you're trying to go to sleep. And I go, I'll like, just check. Don't do it. Oh, don't do it. I know. <laughs> Totally. But what's your uh, like? What is your F of your for you page like? Is it like uh, like what kind of content? It's kind of all over the place. Weirdly, I have a bunch of funny things that um, yeah. when they're pranking. Then I also yeah. have a lot of dances. And I, when they were doing the shuffle for a while, yeah. I would get up at one o'clock. I mean, I know this is ridiculous, especially at my age too. But I'm going <laughs> on in front of the mirror at one o'clock in the morning trying to learn it. the steps or going up the stairs that one that goes up the stairs you're getting um, your nighttime that. cardio it's great i know it's insane <laughs> completely insane and then there's some entertainment i do watch uh, you know a lot of hair things yeah. as well yeah even me because um, it's uh, well my problem is is i for my social media manager probably is very annoyed but i kind of forget to like change from fable and main to like my personal one so i just i think the fyp oh. for for fable and main is like all my stuff like i'll be like cats and stuff <laughs> my social media manager is probably like why is this being shown <laughs> i'm like sorry <laughs> i've ruined the algorithm but um it, it is what it is um my next yeah. question is what is your favorite quote i know you mentioned before like education is for life not for graduating is that yours or do you have another one um no that's I like that one, but I think it would be, um, I don't know if it's a quote exactly from, I don't have it down here from Jimmy Iovine or Dr. Dre or somebody like that, but I always liked this statement and I, because I totally relate to it, which is let fear be your tailwind and not your headwind. And so for me, fear, yeah, because Mm. for me, my daughter, one of the reasons I think that I've done and had the drive that I have is that I had twins and one of them was born with congenital heart disease. And I knew she was going to need, um, heart, several open heart surgeries and at the least, and she's 35 now she's had two open heart surgeries, one closed. And I knew then when I had the twins and she was sick that I had to make sure that I could be responsible for whatever health needs there were. And that fear absolutely was my tailwind. It didn't Mm. paralyze me at all. It more drove me to try to make sure that I could have a life for her, that if she needed anything, (coughs) I would be able to, um, because my husband's more of a musician, so I knew it was going to be more down to me to be able to do that. So... um, yeah, that that's is amazing. The quote. I, I, I love when I hear how like a quarter statement with also the real life um, inspiration is, is when it comes together, it gives you even more of a chill of like, OK, now you've inspired me with that. And it's amazing. So thank uh, you for sharing that. Um, and, mm-hmm. and my last question is, if you weren't a beauty entrepreneur, what would you be doing? I mean, I know maybe music, but if maybe even if I take that out of the remit, what would you be doing right now? Yeah. You know, I've always wanted to be in politics, but not running myself, but Mm. being somehow involved in change, but um, like working for a campaign or working in one of the agencies. But I now, because of the climate right now, I don't know if, but that's always what I was thinking before. But by the same token, I was thinking now it's needed more than ever people exactly to help. I, was, I was literally about and, to you know? say yeah yeah and and you never know because you know i i just believe anyone can end up anyone who wants to make change will end up in a place to make change so i fully believe you'll do that it's just about of when yeah. and, and i mean what's the i best would really like to yeah, yeah thank you i would really that's what i would oh that was the other thing so i read like most of the books behind me are non-fiction because yeah. i learn a lot from the personalities and the issues you know and the trials and tribulations of other people you do learn a lot and um yeah so i've always been interested in politics and leaders and how do you face things and what change can you make 
We need well, a lot I mean, of change right now. It's needed more so than ever. And I think uh, if we see it and it's not really happening, we do it. You know, one by one, we have to just be the change we want to see, which is I that quote so. we all know. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Yeah. But um, no, it's been an absolute honor and pleasure to have you, Gail, on this podcast. I could speak to you for so long and I can't believe I we can... have so much in common, which is crazy. I know. I could talk to you forever, too. I feel like I've known you. I know. Somehow. Well, we're, now next step is we're going to meet. I'm going. I'm actually coming to New York in a in a, in a end of Feb. So when I come, um, uh, I'll hopefully see you and oh, you can do me. a little trip. I'll let you know, and that'll be so nice. I, okay. I, 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 I really need. To, I like to go to Connecticut too because it's an escape from the city, and it's so it's so beautiful. So yeah, we'll Perfect. definitely let you know. Um, but okay, in the meantime, where, where can everyone find yourself on socials or Color Wow? Oh, like what is the... the yeah. Yes, uh, it's Color Wow Hair, um, at Color Wow Hair uh, everywhere on um, yes. our website and on um, Insta everywhere. And yeah. mine is at Gail Fed, G-A-I-L-F-E-D, Perfect. everywhere. Well, I'll put the links all in the below and so people can just click directly. Perfect. And um, in the meantime, I wish you all the best, all the happiness, and I'll see you very, very soon when I come to the States. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you.